my early research and kind of during my PhD and shortly afterwards was around sexiness and how women understand the feeling of sexiness. And I think I think I've only come to that idea of, of, of it being that feeling quite recently it was kind of couched in the sexualization of culture so the debates that were going on at the time around um, those issues but since then I started thinking about it as as the feeling being the important thing so I think the concept of post-digital intimacies is really exciting and, and, and pulls together the work I've done I do think our experience of the world is is couched in a series of relationalities with other people other objects other things other spaces that the work that I've done there, there is always that grab. There's always that it moves me in some way. It moves me in ways that I think are uh, quite often ambiguous and difficult. And um, I think it's those moments, digital um, or cultural expressions, that grab us that feel both troubling and pleasurable and I think that was the same when I was interested in sexiness I found, I, you know found it both fascinating and interesting and problematic at the same time the paper starts with the example of a celebrity called Jenna Duran who quite recently posted a series of very stylish very beautiful photographs of herself during pregnancy um, and one of the comments on those images was um, your goals in every way, moon goddess, which I thought was a really fascinating statement since it kind of reflects this idea that, that such beauty is both normative and exceptional and that we're meant to be doing both at the same time. In that kind of deconstructive move, move what is left? What is, what's the result of that? What happens on the other end of that? And that kind of deeply aspirational culture I started thinking about in the way that shame demonstrates how deeply related we are to the world, which kind of takes us back to that, that concept of, of post-digital intimacies. So it's an exploration of some of those issues around perfection, aspiration and shame and how that ties into larger narratives around health. I think there's a really interesting series of questions that we can ask about post-digital intimacies and even on the impact agenda that we need to start thinking about very seriously in relation to issues of, um, of harm, of pleasure, of effect, and how we can how we can start questioning the worlds that we're living in, the experiences that we're having in this context in relation to making the world a bit kinder is kind of where I'm thinking at the moment in terms of what you know what, what do we do next where do we go next I think I think kindness needs to be kindness and care need to come into the dialogue around post-digital intimacies and, and what this context means for equality inclusion um, better worlds better futures I think the most important thing um, for PhD students and, and early career researchers and most researchers um, and academics is to make sure that we're asking questions that have longevity. You know, issues around subjectivity, issues around intimacy are never going to grow old. We're always going to have, um, these concepts are always going to be changing and always going to be uh, relevant and important if we're if we're looking at something like gender and feminist research I, don't, I can't imagine a time where it's more vital that we have people um, in this field doing this work because there's never been a moment where where it hasn't been so important to be engaging in that research and I think those those kind of enduring questions are really important in a digital context where the object of our analysis might change the platform might change the Instagram account that we're analysing might disappear. But as long as we're remaining with those, those issues that have longevity, our research will always be important, our research will always be vital. Mm -hmm.